Well, happy Tuesday. Today is the 23rd of August. Where the hell is the year gone already? And we're going to have a conversation today about some interesting things. And we have an interesting comedian. So, welcome to my channel. Well, I'm going to be talking about the Constitution versus the Democrats and Republicans. This is a call for a third party. Now, there's one form called the Forward, and I'm still doing research on that to see what their ideas are. Uh, I don't know, but we need to do something. I'm coming to the conclusion, uh, well, I'll talk about that more later on. But right now, let's let Mike Williams, who's a storyteller, not a joke teller, and so we have a story, one of his stories. And Mike, tell your story. I take a lot of medications, okay? I take 15 pills because of my heart condition. I take 15 pills every day. Now, if my wife were here, she would be in the back. She would put her hands up. She would say, you tell them the truth. Okay, here's the truth. I do take 15 pills every day. Three of them were given to me by doctors. <laughs> Twelve were given to me by people like you around the country who said, if you'll take this, you'll get better, okay? That, that's, that's the deal. Anyway, the story is, I had flown this red-eye flight. I fell asleep. I didn't wake up until 12.30 at night. I missed my 9 o'clock in the morning pills. I missed my 9 o'clock at night pills, and it freaked me out because I know that my heart is going to be off the chain real quick. I quietly got up, out of bed. I didn't want to wake up my wife. I love my wife. That's the kind of husband I am. I got out quietly, went into the kitchen, didn't even turn on the light because the light could shine into the bedroom and wake her up. I didn't want to wake her up. That's the kind of husband that I am. That's the way I roll. That's how I do it, okay? And so I quietly, I open the refrigerator door just to have enough refrigerator light to begin to take my 15 pills. Now, I'm telling you right now, you can't take 15 pills at once. I've tried. I take mine in like three groups of seven. And so, <laughs> not a big math crowd uh, right here. <laughs> Woo, go homeschool. And, and so, uh, I start taking my pills. In the taking of my pills in the semi-darkness, I look down. Apparently, I have dropped two pills on the floor. Now, we have young kids at our house. We believe if something falls on the floor, you have a short amount of time, a window of time in which to pick them up, and they are still considered clean. Are you with me? At our house, that's 45 minutes, okay? And so... Uh, <laughs> I, I reached down, I pick up the pills, dust them off, pop them in my mouth, swallow them down, went back, slid into bed as quietly as I could because that's the kind of husband I am. And I'm laying there trying to get back to sleep. But I'm so tired and my body clock is off. Have you ever been so tired you can't sleep? What is the deal with that? Where's a medical person? Is any doc? Is there a doctor or a nurse in here? Anybody? Nobody will claim it tonight, will you? Okay, right. I, I don't understand this. How can you be too tired to sleep? It makes no sense. I've never been so hungry I couldn't eat, right? <laughs> I, I, I've never been, I have got a piece so bad I can't pee. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I said that last night in St. Louis, an old guy shouts out, well, you've never had a kidney stone. And so that's, that's, that's what he said, okay? So, and I'm just, I'm exhausted. So I'm laying there trying to go to sleep. Now, I've heard about people who count sheep, okay? You know, they count sheep. I don't know how to count sheep. Never raised sheep. Uh, again, a little bit of that religion background. And just so I, I like to go through the books of the Bible. I like to just count them. You know what I mean? Count the books of the Bible. One, Genesis. Two, Exodus. Three, Leviticus. Four numbers. You know, do all 35, 40 of them. And, and go through that. <laughs> Not a big theological crowd either. Put that down. Okay. <laughs> And go through the, and as I'm going through the books of the Bible there, I, I went quickly, I started to get indigestion. I went quickly from indigestion to an upset stomach, quickly from an upset stomach to pain. Now, when I reached pain, I realized that I should not suffer alone. Can I get a witness, man? Can I get a witness? Okay. <laughs> And, and I turned to my wife, the love of my life. We have been married 33 years consecutively, okay? And, and, and I turned to her, and I shook her arm, and I said, baby, wake up. I'm not feeling well at all. To which my wife, the love of my life, my childhood sweetheart, opens one eye and says, 
Roll over and go to sleep. You'll feel fine in the morning. Let me say, that was not the level of care I expect after 33 faithful years. And I started to get mad. I started to get angry. And I said, nope, not going to do it. What would Jesus do? I thought he would send her to hell right now is what he would do. <laughs> She'd be gone. You know what I mean? No, 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 no. I said, I said, Jesus would give her a second chance. Can I get it? Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Okay. And, and so, so I thought about this and I said, I have got to put this in a way. I've got to wake her up in a way that she can buy into having empathy for me. Now, some of you are saying, Mike, you sound like a counselor background. No, no counseling background at all. But my wife was. My wife has her bachelor's degree in counseling and her master's degree in orchestral conducting. My wife is a female orchestra conductor. I know it's impressive, but talk about unemployable. There it is. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but I'm not bitter. It was $120,000 that one day we'll be glad we're paying for. And so, anyway, <laughs> she used to wake me up at all hours of the night when she was pregnant. My wife was infatuated with our child's kicking. And she would wake me up in the middle of the night and say, baby, feel this. She would grab my hand and she would put it on her stomach. And she'd go, wait. And I would wait. And she'd go, okay, wait. And, and about 20 minutes later, She'd go, there, there, did you feel that? And I would always go, oh, wow, that was amazing. But I'm going to be honest with you. I'm probably going to get kicked out of the men's club for saying this. I never felt nothing, nothing, <laughs> nothing, not a zip, zilcho. But I always pretended I did. Why? Because I loved her and I loved the child, okay? I think it ought to be reciprocal. I reached over, I shook her arm, I said, baby, wake up, feel my stomach, something is kicking. To <laughs> To which she opens up one eye and says, quit whining. <gasps> Out of the mouth of a Christian woman. Now I'm mad. Now I'm laying right over on my side of the bed, right there against the, the I'm just talking to myself. I'm not whining. I know when I'm whining. Oh, I can, I'm a man. I know how to whine. We were trained in it when we were young. I know, I know how to whine. I'm, I'm not just going to get better in the morning. I know when I'm going to get better in the morning. I'm not going to get better. In fact, I hope I die. I hope I die to prove to you and your mother. <laughs> Finally, I couldn't take it anymore. I got up, I got dressed. I got in my car, drove down to the emergency room. They took me right in and started scanning my body with an ultrasound machine. You know those machines that look inside you. They're asking me questions. Mr. Williams, have you had an operation recently? I said, no, last operation I had was 27 years ago. Why do you ask? And he turned the screen toward me and he moved the probe right in here. He said, Mr. Williams, if you'd had an operation, we'd almost believe that somehow they had inadvertently, accidentally, of course, left two sponges in you. There are two sponges, uh, Medical size, six inch medical, don't get ahead of me. You already know more than I knew at the time. Two six inch medical sponges in your intestinal tract. The young doctor leans over and he says, one of the sponges looks like a dinosaur. Okay? Uh, don't, don't get ahead of me. Don't get ahead of me. They do a little more scanning, then they left the room. They went out to that, you know how they have it in the emergency room? They have that island of computers out there where they go out and look up on Google to see what they think you might have. And <laughs> of course, I'm on Obamacare, so I get a free second opinion from Bing. And so, anyway. <laughs> When they went out there, I got out my phone, I called my wife, I woke her up for a third time. I said, I'm not just whining, I'm not just going to get better in the morning. I have two sponges in me, six inch sponges in my intestinal tract, and one of the sponges looks like a dinosaur. <laughs> to which my wife, the love of my life, 33 years, says to me, we went to the dollar store today. Have you ever had somebody join your conversation that had no idea what you were talking about? I said, baby, wake up. I'm at the emergency room, the ER. Er, I am here. I am here. Three doctors are in the room. I have a T-Rex in my intestines. I could, I could care less where you went shopping today. She said, I'm not asleep, silly. We went to the doctor today, and your middle son, Coleman, with his dollar, bought four little green pills. When you throw them in water, six minutes later, they expand a six-inch foam dinosaur. Source. He lost two of the pills. I said, I will call you back. I hung up the phone. I hit that button. Let me tell you, they're quicker in the emergency room than they are in the rest of the hospital. Okay. All of a sudden, the doctors come in the room. Uh, yes, Mr. Williams. And I said, ha, ah. ha. I think I might be able to uh, tell you what might have happened. And I told them what happened at my wife, and they started laughing at me. <laughs> 
not just laughing, no, calling other people in other parts of the hospital to come down to the emergency room where they would rescan my body and take selfies of the picture right there. The young doctor would hold the probe right here. He'd go like this, look, it looks like the dinosaurs are running, okay? <laughs> Finally, I said, okay, ha, 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 what do you have to do? What do you have to do? Do you have to pump my stomach? And, and the older doctor said, no, I believe the hypothesis you provided amply meets within the American Medical Association guidelines and the pH nature of the sponge compared to the acidic value of the uh, intestinal gases would more than likely take care of itself within a reasonable amount of uh, time that we would feel would be associated with the problem. I had no idea what he said. He walks out of the room like I should know, right? Uh, the young doctor leans over to me. He says, Mr. Williams, uh, you didn't understand what the doctor said at all, did you? I said, no, I didn't. He said, I see from your chart here that you're a missionary in the Dominican Republic. You work with kids down there. I said, yeah, that's what I do. He said, you probably have some type of like a theological or Christian background. I said, yes, I do. He said, I'm, I'm a Christian. He said, can I put it in, in religious terms for you? I said, go for it, brother. He said, Genesis chapter four, verse three says, and it came to pass. Okay, that's what he said. That's what he said. I hope you enjoyed Mike. Uh, his his link will be below. He's uh, uh, he has a religious overtone, not too bad, uh, but there were some cute stories in there, and it's a pleasant 26 minutes. So uh, give him a, a shot. I'll give him about a, a four and a half on, on the on my scale, wherever the hell my scale is. Uh, but uh, it's. Uh, Give me a look, give me a look. So today I'm gonna to talk about the Constitution versus the two political parties we have in this country. There was a time, and I remember it, when the two parties would do things together. Uh, they had the Speaker of the House, who, whose job was to bring the two, the two parties together, and you never, and you, I shouldn't say never, but you didn't see this constant no. If it's a Democratic idea, no. If it's a Republican idea, no wasn't like that and, and somehow it's come like that uh, some people have said uh, that this is all started with Newt Gingrich probably did but it's gotten to the point now that the Republican Party and the Democratic Party are unable to do anything so we need a third party a third party that will work with the two parties and have a majority they don't need a majority, but have a, a say in what swings. Now, I'm coming a strict constant, not a strict, but a constitutionist, constitutionalist, a constitutionalist. I believe in the Constitution is a living, breathing document. The founders, or as they call them, the frame makers, the frame workers, developed a document that could be changed, that could be added to, and I believe they meant for things to evolve. And, and we have two parties who are, one says it's not in the Constitution, and the other says, well, it does if you interpret this way. And yeah. There's got to be a third party that looks at the Constitution and develops ideas based on the Constitution. And like I said, I'm checking out this forward party as I get more information, I'll let you know. Uh, they're looking to start grassroots and work their way up. So you may not see anything in the presidential thing happening for probably 12 years, if at all. So, there are my ideas. You got ideas, put the comments below. There has to be change, and it has to start at the grassroots. So, I'm a grassroots. We'll see you next week. Bye.